And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, back at the English Institute of Sport. My name's Yuri Matishan. We're on table six at the Euro European Para Table Tennis Championships. We have the men's double final. It's class 18, and it's Katz and Mai from the Ukraine against Grudzian and Chojnowski from Poland. And I'm with Farrell Anthony as he's been here all week. Should be a tasty final, Farrell. Uh, yeah, very competitive. Uh, Ukraine and Poland is always a feisty match anyway, so um, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, early exchanges. One point, one point apiece. And uh, Ukrainians serve at long on that occasion and wide yeah great touch by Janowski there kept it really tight on the table let called couldn't handle the spin on that one there no very heavy spin there have you seen either of these pairings play earlier on uh, no, I'm not, no, it's the first time I've seen them play uh, on this, um, in this competition. Good, strong forehand topspin there from Grudzian. Super shot. Tarnowski couldn't respond. Very tall. Tall player standing about six, 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 seven out there, if not taller. Pretty impressive there. No prisoners taken. I haven't got the insight on which of these pairings would be seen as a, a higher ranking than the others, but... Um, I think the Poles will be favourite to win it. Um, Janowski's a multiple major winner and he won the Class 10 uh, gold medal um, in the recent singles at the, earlier on in the week. Earlier on in the week, Janowski with a gold. A couple of strong table tennis nations though aren't they Poland and Ukraine they've all picked up medals pretty deeply yes they are very strong positions in table tennis as well Ukraine leading 6-4 oh, brilliant rally finished off by the Ukrainians there Janowski hitting into the table, literally. That was long from Katz. And that customary towel break, 8-4 to the Ukrainians. Good start by the Ukrainians. Yeah, very good. Um, as, as, as Yuri said, it's, um, they're allowed to speak, um, towel down every six points. We've got ourselves back to 7-5. My apologies on the score swapped over on the screens. 8-5 to the Ukrainians now. Brilliant ball there from Grudzian. Came across onto his forehand side to play it just wide of the um, Ivan Mai. Yeah, Mai had to stretch a long way to try and get that back. Beautiful rally, oh. what a shot. <laughs> a running winner there from Chanowski. Oh. Using the full length of his body and his arms. That really generated some power and speed. Chanowski. Oh, separated your players there, didn't they? That ball chased Chojnowski, was trying to get away from it, but almost 
caused a problem for his fellow partner, Grusian. Interestingly, the Ukrainians edging towards this first set, 9-7. Tronovsky pushing deep. Yeah, and Kerry's through to he wasn't happy about that. Threw his bat in the air. 10-7, three set points for the Ukrainian pairing. And off the top of the net from Tronovsky. And 11-7, first set to the Ukrainians. Perhaps against the fancied Poles. Yes, but I mean, the Ukrainians are a very strong pairing. They've played together quite a few years now. And... Um, It'll be an interesting matchup. I think sometimes the first game can get away from players and you know they don't get into it and then you know it, it, they sort of get better as the game goes on and that's what uh, the Polish coach will be um, expecting from his players that they'll actually get better as the match goes on. It's always good to get that first set under your belt. Get some other replays here. So if you've just joined us, just to say that the, um, during um, during a match, the, um, the players are allowed one minute in between each game um, to take um, some fluid on, listen to a coach, and maybe take a bit of food. Uh, the other thing that happens in the in a match is they will have one timeout per match, which is for 60 seconds, which neither team have taken just yet. But that's just sometimes to break up the play. That's one timeout per set, not in the entire match, is it? It's per no, set. No, per get. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Per, per match. I said per match. It's one. It's games and matches. Oh, you're calling it games <laughs> and matches? Then one, one per game. Is, uh, yeah, it's one per. Yeah. No worries. Got it. So. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just one sixty-second break in a five-set match good tactical opportunities to realign and recalibrate for the coaches that's right yeah hand goes up there the referee says uh, a ball came flying in from the other court you can see it happening in the background and remarkably the play is still staying focused and not getting interrupted by that background noise that goes on which is another game yeah Janowski's just um, questioning the ball I think they've got a new ball what the ball said when he questioned it it was broken probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am broken <laughs> that's right there's a hole in me so gentle Tomowski oh my bit snatchy mm. yeah good opening from the poles though into the net couldn't handle the response yeah, the serve was just a bit tad too long and Ivan Mai just got in there with his forehand 3-1 to the Ukrainians super defence from the Poles Oof. oh brilliant from Chanowski Came across and round the ball to play it down the line, but a great rally from both teams. Yeah, that's uh, super stuff when you've seen it at this level. Super, super table tennis. And long from Mai. Three all. Nothing between the teams, but that important first set to the Ukrainians. You think this might be one of those uh, five setters? It could be, very well. Certainly warrants the opportunity. And long there from the poles for the Grisian. Tronowski down the middle. Tentative return there. It's almost set him up, didn't it? Uh, yes, and that's what they'll try not to do. Um, but sometimes 
with the spin on the ball. Very deceptive. Just like then, Ivan Mai just fooled Goodsy again. He didn't put a lot of topspin on the ball. And when Goodsy put it back there, it just dropped off. Timeout's been called, there it is. Um, I think by the Polish team. Yeah, it's by the Polish team. They won't want to lose this game because then they've got to win the next three and that it could be a struggle, an uphill struggle if you're 2-0 down. Um, so they're just trying to break it up and just um, just take on um, some advice from the coach. Yeah, uh, and Janowski's just taking a drink. It is very warm out there as well. Hugely humid under the lights and in this temperature. Uh, no air conditioning in the hall. Um, that's out of choice for the competition and I suppose the ball moves quicker in the heat. Yeah, but with air conditioning can make the ball move even worse. It's, uh, it's very difficult to put air conditioning in when the balls are flying around. Indeed. And, uh, so that's it, the minute is up. <laughs> and um, they've both come back to the table. The Ukrainians to serve. Katz from Ukraina. Oh. Opening up from Ivan Mai. Serve just drifted long. And Chanowski will look for any opportunity to get that strong forehand in. perhaps from Katz and that timeout's worked because the Poles have taken the last two points and the last three points very deceptive serve there from Chanowski lots of backspin on the ball misread by mine he put it into the bottom of the net and again the Ukrainians not calling a timeout either, but uh, it's 5 8. And having been slightly in control, they've lost that opportunity. Chinovsky went big there, Farrell. Yeah, he did very big. Um, too big, to be fair, but it, he has to put pressure on the Ukrainians in terms of trying to win the points. Great defensive. Tarnowski uh -oh. lost his footing there. And he puts a heck of a swing into that ball, doesn't he? I mean, it's yeah, he's, ring, he's tall, he's got long arms, he's very powerful as well, Tarnowski. Jim couldn't handle the spin, you could see how it drifted to the right from the back. Yeah, the, and the, the Ukrainians are trying to pin the Polish players into one corner. So they're not playing the whole table, they're just trying to keep them in one corner to make it difficult for them to respond because they have to take it in turns to hit the ball. Yeah. What a that super was, shot. Wow. Came across the ball, flicked it wide. They weren't expecting that. It was a very, very cool shot. That's what you call about having intelligence around the sport. Great IQ from Mai. And a super shot went the other way and sets up a 10 8 lead when it looked as if the Poles, after the timeout, had got their game back. The Ukrainians have responded magnificently here, Farrell. 10-8, it's two set points to go two sets up. Oh, and Chernovsky fails, hits the net. Looks down in disgust. Yes, and uh, the Ukrainians will be really happy about that. Because at one point, when they took the time out, the, the Poles actually took the lead. 
and it looked as though they may um, win the get win that set. But the um, some brilliant play from both Ukrainians to win, you know, get themselves back in the match. And uh, Ivan Mai played was very clever in his returns. Just kept the poles guessing, didn't know where the ball was going to go. Yeah, you have to give credit. And uh, the Ukrainians in their traditional yellow and blue and the Poles in their traditional red juxtaposed colours and the, uh, the yellow of the Ukraine slightly out on top. But 2-0, this would be a huge effort for the, uh, the Poles to pull back, wouldn't it? It would, but it is possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As we've seen all week, there have been some really competitive games where players have been too... 2 0 up and then lost. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not called, it's called the best of five for a reason. And so, you know, um, the Poles could turn it round. I think the danger here, having seen some of those five setters, is that the team in the ascendancy begins to play safe. And, and that just goes right into the hands of the more positive pairing. So, yeah. Again. Making it difficult for Chanelsi to get any good shots in at the moment. Yeah, they, they really tucked him up there. It followed him, the ball. First slip up in about five or six points for the Ukrainians. They'll yeah. live with that, I'm sure. One apiece. In a game like this, the Ukrainians will just want to scratch their way to that 8-8, eight, 9-9 eight, nine, nine position. Yeah, shot again it almost just struck the edge of the table I suppose that's good depth or it is <laughs> but they they're tucking the poles up into one corner and it forced their, the the serve was very good there it was on the Brudzian very quickly didn't have time to react and the thing is the poles haven't got a time out now they haven't got any more time out 3-1 Chinovsky is just losing his cool a bit. Hey, he's cutting a frustrated figure at the moment. 4-1. He's the main guy that they need him firing. But still, I'm going to go gently. Just a point back for the Poles there. But the Ukrainians will be happy to trade, won't they? If it's point for point now, they, yeah. they win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's uh, perhaps playing higher percentages for their game. Yeah, I don't think they'll play safe, though. They know we can't, because once they start doing that, um, the Poles could get back into the game and they won't want that. Oh, oh very, very good touch there from the Polish player, Chanowski. 4-3. Yep, and there he stepped across his backhand side, his forehand to play a backhand right back to the server. And they pulled it back to four all. The last three points have gone with the poles. Oh, and that table was open there for the kill, wasn't it? <laughs> They've done the hard work there. Just couldn't make it drop. So suddenly the Poles lead 5-4. This is a real seesaw event today. And the Ukrainians go down 4-6, having led 4-1. That's right. Big momentum change. Oh, shit. Tchernovsky was so quick to intercede there, wasn't he? Very quick. Took it off the top of the bounce really early. Didn't give the Ukrainian sense to respond. But they've stemmed the flow. That, they'll, they'll be happy with that. They'll take a break now. Towel break. 5-7. Poles desperately need this set. If 
they want to prevent the Ukrainians from taking the gold. Oh, an uncharacteristic miss there. It shows you what a bit of pressure can do to you. Yeah, it just tightened up a bit. Oh. And uh, that's really given the advantage back now to the Bulls. 5-9. It's about managing out this set to stay in the game. Oh, brilliant. Right down the middle. Took him Chanowski up and he's so frustrated. It's, um, it's good play by the Ukrainians. That seems to be what you need to do. You need to really tuck this man up because if he gets his arm flowing, the ball's not coming back. There's well, been a number of missed hits now from... Yeah, and Goodson's getting back into mine. the game now. Good top spin from Goodson there. So, 10-6. Four, four opportunities to close out this third set and get back in the game. I don't know if the Poles expected that to come back, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> and we just left it. Yeah. So, well, that point's over, forget it. 10-7 still all in their favour for this set to go 2-1 and there it is yep. job done for the Poles 2-1 but they'll need to play like that for the next two sets if they're That's to take the gold so yeah. good recovery a good recovery and um, it, like I say the, like you said the, the, the game can see so and in that a particular game cats and mice started to miss the the balls that they've been putting on in the first and second sets with ease and um it will be very interesting how they start they've still got um, a timeout as well so um if the poles get too far ahead they can sort of break the play up a bit more yeah and uh my and cats Doing a good job, 2-1 up. I think they'd be happy with where the position is in the match right now. And the Poles with the great Tchernovsky. Great in every sense, huge reach. Six foot seven, six foot eight tall. Probably take on the Ukrainians by himself. <laughs> Uh, great battle going on here. Good gin goes long. That was a super oh. shot from Mai, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. A big top spin from. Chanowski, but very good touch to block the ball back into the open space from Katz. Sorry, from my From sorry. Maia, yeah. yeah, from Maia, had sorry. sort of poor end to that set, but his last two shots have been important. <laughs> uh, Maia had to go a long way across. Well placed, that one. Yes, and... Um, like you said in the previous game, they've got to try and tuck Tanowski up. Because if, he, if he gets his arm free, his shots are incredible. Really good push there. Fast and long into the Goodsian forehand. Three one. The Ukrainians were here before and lost that advantage. Well, <laughs> I think Katz loved that. He was yeah. purring. Yeah, fist pump as well. A really well executed shot, though. I can't help falling into the trap of saying cats and mice, but I'm trying not to. And Farrell, I'm trying not to. Tremendous.
That took a let, didn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. a serve. Oh, and that's just clipped the top of the net there. But they'll be happy with a 2-4 lead. They this will. first towel break, so to speak. And uh, it's been a fascinating week of para table tennis competitions flying everywhere. It was, it's been wonderful to watch, and we're getting to these crucial doubles finals now. Yeah, Chanowski. Yeah. Very strong backhand. Very much keeping the Polish pairing in the game is the big man. Keeps bringing them back when they go three or four down. Okay. Very four quick on to that, Cats then. You know, it's a replica of the last set. The Ukrainians led 4-1. Pinned back to 4-4. Uh, right, clipped the net on the way and they just acknowledged that as well. Changed the trajectory of the fly to the ball. 5-4, the Ukrainians get a welcome point. And again, my is foxing. He's not putting a lot of spin on the ball. And Grudgin's misreading it all the time. I mean, it, pl it was played from almost floor level height, that was. It was so low he took it. Yeah, but it, it can dummy loop. It's what's called a dummy loop, so there's very little spin on it at all. Super, super cross court. He's got great feeling, my, there. But this I mean, that ball is travelling from Chanowski and he just blocks it into the open space using the speed of the ball that's already um, been played by Chanowski. Wow. Oh, and Grudgeon is now feeling the press of it. 8-4, and what a turnaround. It was 4-all and poof, 8-4. And that's the game of table. It can change just like that. Um, people get confidence. People lose confidence. It's um, eight for the lead. This kind of timeout call there. Interesting. Just yeah, felt. Think, yeah, he, he's obviously feeling a bit uh, flustered, and they don't want to lose this lead now. I mean, if they can. 8-5, 2-1 up. Wow, what a position to be in, hey? Very good position. And, uh, what uh, would you be saying right now, Farrell? I'd be saying keep on playing. Don't don't put play safe. Just do what you've been doing. Because if you start to play safe, that's when you're going to make mistakes. Big mistakes. And you're going to let... You can't let Chanowski get his big shots in. Because if he starts to flow, he's going to be really dangerous. I suppose, would they be trying to get more onto Grudgeon and, and just tie up Janowski as they I mean they have yeah, been haven't yeah, they that's They're what they've been doing they've been trying to play into one corner so not giving them trying not to give Janowski space to play shots so when they play to Grudzian they play back to Grudzian so, so that Janowski has to sort of try and get step across yeah. it to, to get his shot which yeah that's right not as much fluidity available to him and maybe not as much space either Wise words of Farrell Anthony. Ooh, uh, early point there for the Poles. An early cheap point as cheap well. Cheap point, yeah, you're right, you're right. And that's one back without a fight. And there it is. He's just, he opens up <laughs> and just... <laughs> You give him space and it, he just he will make sure that he puts the ball on the table with power and precision. Right, right on the edge and suddenly two points and three points. Just like yeah, that. Just like that. And, and that's what the Ukrainians were scared of. Well, 
but it only needs one point and the pressure builds back on on the poles who would exit not exit they would lose the final oh and long from Mai and the pressure has got to them it's nine eight to Grudgen and Chanovsky. brilliant serve oh. he looked for it and he, he's sort of indicating that he couldn't get his elbow out of the way really it was a very good serve and nine. they needed that they needed it well it's it's nine all the graphic is a bit slow but it's nine all foul these points I mean, the Ukrainians will have a second chance if they lose this set but the Poles know Janowski to serve great shot again it's so precise right on the corner no fear at all no, there wasn't anything the Ukrainians could do it's 10-9 to the Polish team oh and that was luck the luck favoured Grudgen there and it's <laughs> now to all two sets all now it's a one set shootout Grudgen just had a piece of luck there. But we'd be pleased it went over. We will definitely be pleased it went over. But <laughs> the Ukrainians, they, you see, the thing is, that they, they were 8 5 up and then they took a timeout. But after the timeout, the Poles got one really quick point. Yep. And that has settled them. And then Chanowski just played. And they couldn't do anything he's just played winners they've not made mistakes he's played two fantastic winners into the same corner with precision and that'll give the Poles confidence coming into this fifth game yeah it was uh, you know it was certainly there for the Ukrainians to win and they weren't able to win it and the Poles took it back off them literally have brought it down to this one set shootout well, on that occasion the Ukrainians responded well trying to keep the Chonovsky guy out of the frame Yeah, 2 0 to the Ukrainians, Farrell. Yeah, brilliant backhand there from my. He went for it. He went for it, didn't he? <laughs> he really went for it. He wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna just put it back on the table. And it was to Grusian, so the opportunity there was for 3-0, oh, but it's 2-1 still. What a recovery from Chinovsky's shot. Look at that. Wow! Oh. <laughs> what My. a rally. Chinovsky with some rocket backhands, but matched by the Ukrainian pair. Table tennis of the highest order. Full stop. So good in to serve. And they'll try and keep this as tight as possible. Trying to not let Chanowski get in. And short game, but he does get in. A nice push there and wide. Yeah, flicked it. Very strong. Huge reach. 3-2 to the Ukrainians. And that's the pressure of trying to be aggressive on Grudgian's serve. Just going long. And those are the kind of mistakes you don't want to make. In these Not in a game of this magnitude. No. So three all. 
nothings between these two teams. It's been a great match. And there are two mistakes from the Ukrainians providing the Polish pairing with an advantage. Chernovsky goes wide and low. And you feel the momentum is going with the Polish team. Three went up with the Ukrainians and suddenly the last four points very quickly. Very quickly Poles. as well. So it'll be Chanowski to serve to Mai. Mai will be looking to try and put some pressure on Grudzin. And Chernovsky is beginning to take over. The Ukrainians was, looking a bit forlorn here. Yeah, it wasn't a strong enough return to good gym. And Remarkably, from two sets down, they're not even talking to each other, the Ukrainians. They're trying to ride out this storm that's come and hit them. Six consecutive points against them. That leg just crawled over. And for once, Chernovsky says, I, I was cropped too much with my elbow there. It, took, it was tucked up a bit, so yeah. um, right idea and... Um, 4-8. It's be interesting to see what, what serves Goodstein does now, whether he'll float the ball or whether he'll put heavy backspin on it. Chernovsky long. Yeah, but he had to attack it. Cat's there. He doesn't want to push the ball. He doesn't want to give Chernovsky a chance to get an easy a ball. 5-8. Yeah, Grudgen did well. And feels like the Ukrainians really need a big response, some, something special. Oh, Tarnowski long. Just shadowing what he should have done. Ukrainians hanging in. Oh, and Mai is just just losing his accuracy, isn't he? He is, and he's, he's making it hard. Well, Chanowski's putting the ball on the table, and he's 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 just panicked there. Well, it's four match points in the fifth set. Will this be gold for the pairing of Grudzian and Chernovsky? They've had to fight all the way back from two sets down. And they've, and got, they've it. got it. That ball long. The Ukrainians were at, weren't at the best in that fifth and final set. But congratulations to the Poles. Yeah, they, they hung in there. They were 2-0 down. They took a timeout. They looked as though they might lose it. And then in the fourth, they did really well. And then... And then in the fifth, it just took, it was too much for the Ukrainians in well, the end. Congratulations to the Polish pairing. They get the gold in this class 18 section. And uh, Tchernowski wins his second gold of the tournament. He'll be pleased. But not a smile cracked yet by the Pole. We'll be back to you shortly for the next para table Tennis European Championship action and more finals to follow.
Welcome back to table six at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. And we are witnessing the semi-finals between the number one ranked Partika and Peck from Poland and Świtac and Arloy are the opponents from Czechia. And uh, Hungary is my mistake, apologies. I'm just looking at them up on the screen there. And the number one ranked are Partika and Peck. And uh, Hungarians ranked third in this semi final. So the Turks start quickly. I'm joined by Farrell Anthony. Hello, Farrell. Hello, sir. how are you? Just a moment's breather there between that last exciting final where the, the Poles again uh, were in the medals. We were. So. And they'll be favourites to take this um, match as well. Um, but the Hungarians will, um, you know, they'll have uh, different thoughts on trying to get to the final. So uh, hopefully we'll have the same sort of compelling, interesting game that we had in the first in the final that we've just seen. Both parties are guaranteed a medal in this competition. And the Polish setup, do you, I mean, when you were playing, Farrell, were the Poles strong and deep as they appear to be here watching this tournament? Yes, they've always been a strong nation. Um, they've, they've produced a lot of great players through all the different classes, from uh, class one to class 11, really. So um, they just carried on the tradition. Um, in Partica, they've got somebody who's... Um, she also played um, in the Olympics as well as the Paralympic Games. She's that good. And she, I think she's she's won lots of major medals and she's the European champion again. I think it's the 10th time she's won it. Well, she looks a complete athlete, tall as well. And uh, that call there, but it's 9-1 already in this first game. And whilst we were just sort of setting the scene, the Poles have gone about their business. And uh, there's a, an error from the Poles, but 9-2 they lead. The Hungarians haven't even drawn breath yet. Good shot. Um, and sometimes that can yeah, sometimes it can happen in the first game where one team just out of the blocks very quickly. Similar to the um, Ukrainians um, in the previous match against the Poles, you know, they had a good start. But um, the Poles uh, brought it back. Yeah, Peck making a mistake there, 9-4. Super shot there from Hungarian, but an even better response. <laughs> Really opened up the floor. And Partika got it back. Really stretching everything to get the ball back. Super shot, set it up beautifully. 10 4. Classic. 11 4 now with that winning shot. Yeah, and they weren't troubled there at all, the Poles. Um, the Hungarians got a bad start and it's always difficult in a game up to 11 once you've um, lost a lot of points it's really difficult to claw it back in, a, in that particular game but they'll, hope to, they'll be hoping to do better in the second game 11-4 and uh, a good start from the Polish pairing who are number one as you said in Partika one of the best players in the entire tournament Just for people who may have just joined us or don't understand um, sort of what's happening in the doubles, there, there's a lot of communication um, below the table using hands and fingers and fists and um, and basically that is to let the, um, their um, colleague know what kind of spin they're putting on the ball. Yeah, that's uh, the hidden language table tennis and 
very quickly 2-0 to the Poles and uh, yeah, Hungary are not finding difficulty in getting any rhythm or momentum and it's 3-0 and is it time for a timeout or keep going uh, I don't know what they, they do it, the poles are very you know they seem to be into their game and um, maybe the player will call a timeout as opposed to the coach Well, after this set of matches that are on court at the moment, there will be a medal ceremony presentation for the men's doubles class 18, men's doubles class 14 and the mixed doubles class 10. And right now, is it the dreaded donut for the uh, Hungarians? Hopefully not. Hopefully they'll, um, you know, they'll um, get a few points on the board as they did last time. Just proving like a train coming from Poland into Hungary. There's the first point, six-one. Just long. Yep, six-two points coming now. There's that message below the table. And frustration there from Arloy. Went long, drifted over the back. Fantastic way that uh, Svitac sets up for her serve. Ball control, beautiful. But 7-2. The Hungarian pairing trailing 8-2 now and long from Parteka 8-3 fascinating to hear she competed in the Olympics itself yes, was she's that good yes yeah, she's very good very good player she was ranked she was definitely ranked in the top 100 in the world in the uh, women's mainstream. And she's been ranked, I don't know if she's ranked one, I think she's ranked two at the moment in here, but she's been ranked number one um, in this particular format as well um, for a long time. But she has a, a plethora of uh, major medals to her name. She first started competing, I think the first Paralympic Games was in 2000 in Sydney and she was 12 year old then. Wow. So still a young person. And they've got two sets. Very matter of fact. 11 4, 11 3. And uh, it just doesn't seem to be a way back for the Hungarians at the moment. Yeah, they're struggling at the moment. They're not um, putting any um, pressure on the Poles. Um, and the Poles are just winning points um, for fun, really, at this moment in time. Yeah, the, uh, the atmosphere is a little bit timid, it's a little bit one-sided, and maybe the Hungarians have been put on the show court here, table six. And uh, getting ready for the third set. And immediately, Poland take that first shot, beautifully executed by Peck down the line. She serves. Short and uh, Alloy can't return that. Too much spin goes long. Tremendous shot from Partica. It's uh, very wonderful to watch. She looks about six foot as an athlete in her own right. This is quite tall. Three one. Is there a way back for these Hungarian pairing? Uh, not the way they're playing at the moment. Because, um, they're not putting any pressure on the poles in terms of 
trying to uh, dominate the rallies and things. It's, it's hard when the, when you've got opponents that are very strong and they're always looking to get in. That was better. But Partick could just, they got in but not strong enough. Four two to the poles. <laughs> it's it's phenomenal to watch. I mean, she is one heck of a player, Partika. Wasn't happy with that one. Five two, six two, and uh, you can say the end is nigh here very quickly. Unless the Hungarians like. Farrell is saying put some pressure on but that's another gifted point eight two there doesn't seem to be a way back does there it's uh, it's looking like a heavy defeat for the Hungarians who are ranked third but they're almost giving up the table, aren't they? They're <laughs> retreating backwards. They just can't handle the, the power of Parteka. And Peck. And Peck. Nine three. A point there for the Hungarians. Two two serves for Partika yeah that was a bit of fortune there but still had to be put away and those are the now match points Farrell yeah it's quite three. close to the pole they've been far too good for the Hungarians um, today they have and perhaps the Hungarians have considered a more aggressive approach but something they can learn of. Maybe they've played them before and wow, that's the kind of shot you're looking for, isn't it? There we go from Alloy. It just long and Schwitax goes long with that last shot. Congratulations to the Poles who advanced to the finals. Pretty short shrift there, Farrell. Yeah, they're far too good for the Hungarians today. Uh, they were both on their game and it um, just showed in the results, really, in the, in the scores, really. Well, tremendous victory there for the Poles. They march on, um, will be medal, gold medal favourites in this particular class of uh, women's 20 doubles. And uh, we will be awaiting the medal ceremonies shortly so we'll be back after the medal ceremonies do watch on if you're involved in those
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for the medal ceremonies of this evening's so far for the European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield at the English Institute of Sport. And our first medalists are for the men's class doubles, men's doubles 18. And our presentation party includes. Alan Ransom, sponsor of the Butterfly Sports and uh, sponsors of these championships here. Alan Ransom, well known to the world of table tennis. And Kim Laws, independent director of British Para Table Tennis. And Great Britain are on the podium in bronze position. And it's Will Ross Wilson, Ross William Wilson, and Joshua Stacey to pick up the bronze medals presented by Mr. Alan Ransom and Mr. Kim Laws. And in the silver medal position, it's Lev Katz and Ivan Mai from the Ukraine who had that five setter. They battled it out with the Polish great pairing of Grudzian and Choynowski, but Lev Katz and Ivan Mai go back with the silver medal. And winners of the 2023 European Championships here in Sheffield in class men's doubles 18. Well, that goes to the Polish pair of Piotr Grudzian and Patrick Chojnowski, a legend already in his own right in para table tennis. They pick up the gold. And we'll be hearing the Polish national anthem shortly. Congratulations to the medalists of the men's double class 18, Great Britain, William Wilson, Ross Wilson as he's known, Josh Stacey in bronze and in... We also have Jorge Cardona and Andes Shepas from Spain in, sil in bronze and in the silver position Lev Katz and even Mai from the Ukraine and the Polish pairs Patrick Chojnowski and Piotr Grudzin. Quickly, we move on to the men's doubles medal presentation for class 14. And the medalists are coming out. And the presenting party includes the senior representative of the Crown Plaza in Sheffield, Mr. Herman Beck and colleague John Conroy, uh, both owners of the Crown Plaza in Sheffield, a sponsor of this event. And Great Britain and Spain pick up the bronze. Siona Alcaraz of Spain and Alejandro Diaz also of Spain. And for Great Britain, Martin Robert Perry and Aaron McGibbon, a bronze medal, yet another medal 
for the British para table tennis team presented by Herman Beck and John Conroy from the Crown Plaza the VIP hotel for these championships and in silver position for Denmark Henrik Brammer and Peter Rosenmeier for the Danish again Herman Beck and John Conroy handing out the medals from the Crown Plaza in Sheffield and gold goes to the mighty pairing from France Esteban Hero and Clément Bertier congratulations to all our medalists but to the French on this occasion victorious Esteban Hero and Clément Bertier And a joyous event as the French people in the crowd singing the French national anthem. Do apologize for interrupting, we all thought that had finished, but an extra round and chorus for the French who take on the gold medal, and no doubt they'll be pleased to be participating in Paris 2024. I'll be handing over to Matea Pintar for our next medal presentation. Next, coming up to the podium to collect their well-earned medals are the best in Europe in mixed doubles 10. Only two doubles will be collecting their medals as is the rule when we have four entries and it's in gold position Mitar Palikucha and Nada Matic for Serbia and in silver Jack Hunter Spivey and Megan Shackleton for Great Britain. The beautiful medals with the emblem of the championships will be presented by Chair of British Para Table Tennis Karen Tong OBE and another board member of British Para Table Tennis Maurice Hamilton along with some very British souvenir, the Yorkshire tea. Another silver after the singles events for Jack Hunter Spivey and his doubles partner Megan Shackleton. Two bronze medalists from the singles events will get crowned with golds now. 
for Serbia, Golden Mix Doubles Class 10, Mitar Palikuća and Nada Matic. Now for the first European champions in Mixed Doubles 10, if you can, please stand up and enjoy the national anthem of Serbia. Applause and another opportunity to take a picture with their shiny new medals for the silver winners Jack Hunter Spivey and Megan Shackleton making this the fourth British doubles medals at this event and the world champions also become European champions in mixed doubles 10 for Serbia, Mitar Palikuća and Nada Matic. A five minute break now and then we will continue with the finals here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. Join us on table one and table six.
so after the medal presentations welcome back to table six here one of the show courts at the European Para Table Tennis Championships and we're in Sheffield and we're into the final day of competition here in Sheffield it's been superb and this is the mixed doubles class of 22 and it's the final match between Zhao and Fernie of France and Makayev and Chikowska of Poland. I'm joined by Farrell Anthony. And uh, Farrell, you've seen one of these pairings before? Yeah, I saw them in the semi final. Um, Zhao and Fernie in the semi final. They look good. Zhao, very strong forehand. Oh, well, it's Antoine Zhao and Leah Fernie. They beat um, the Polish pairing actually 3 2 of. Damien Fira and Christina Maria Lysiak and uh, we've got the Poles in the final and these two Makayev and Chikovska beat the Ukrainian pairing of uh, Valeri, Valeri Volasenko and Natalia Kosmina 3-2 as well so both of them had tough routes to the final sounds like they deserved the wins having gone the five sets so, class 22, and we're underway. The first point, and um, Poland. A powerful attempt by uh, Antoine Jean. Sorry, Leah Fernie. One apiece. Fernie serves. Long from Chikowska. Chikowska, long and short. So, 2 1, the French pairing lead. And there's that strong forehand. There, Anything slightly loose, and he's going to unleash that brilliant forehand that he's got. Super shot there from fellow Paul Makayel. He's just having to go outside the court to get the ball. <laughs> he's hit with that much power. Ball retrieved. Once again, the French dominating early exchanges. Uh, we always think the Poles are a strong force, and they normally are, but gone down big, very early, 6-2. French have got a very good tradition of um, table tennis in um, the Paralympic arena as well, though, so both, both these nations are very strong. 7-3 at the moment to France. They're with serve, Lee Fernie. And Zhao miscalculated, dropped it wide. Boom! And this guy can really hit a ball. Yeah, he gets everything into it. Zhao, the, the factor at the moment that's keeping the French ahead. And it's Tchaikovsky now who's netted a few times, she just hasn't quite got into this. But 9-4 to the French quite quickly. And Zhao goes long. Oh, that Certainly was a great a serve. Yeah. Yeah. Nine six, the French finding a way back now, back into this game. And fortunately, long from Chikowska. Set points quickly, ten six, and 
who else but Antoine Zhao with a huge forehand. Yeah, he, he, in the in the semi final, it was exactly the same. Looking to get his strong forehand in on both, utilizing the full range of the table as well. Um, they'll be happy with the start. The poles will be a bit disheartened by um, the way that Zhao is dispatching the ball, so they'll just have to try and counteract that in the next game. Try and just keep the ball a bit shorter when um, when he's receiving, when they're when they're serving. Because um, if he plays anything long, he just seems to be able to just at will play forehand winners. Well, Antoine Zhao certainly firing up this final. Not that particular shot, but uh, any like this one you can see. That beautifully went right in the corner. Players back to the table. 11-6, the first set to the French in the final of the mixed doubles class 22 at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. Fernie with the serve. Oh, and Chikowska. Certainly has been a kind of a weaker link in these early stages. She's trying to find her rhythm. And Zhao long for once. Yeah, it was a good um, return from Macao. And Perhaps one too often, Zhao going for that killer blow with his forehand. It'll trail 2-1 now. But <laughs> makes a crazy running shot. And celebrates with the fist in the air as well. He liked that. He enjoyed that shot. And Fernie joining him with the uh, forehand winners now. Yeah. Big hit, 3-2 to the French. Oh, and Zhao misses that one. Yeah, just complete air ball, which can sometimes happen. So, 3 all. Yeah, it's a better start from the poles this, this particular game. Just be trying to find and drop into the tempo of this game. Costa with a good serve and Zhao for the backhand not as successful oh super shot Fernie Makayev had come into the middle of the table there Kolsika couldn't do much with that one. Too much spin on it, or yeah, lots of spin. He generates lots of spin. Does Yao? Very awkward. Well played, Makayev there with a the backhand winner. Six four, the French lead. And just long from Fernie. 6-5 the poles getting ever closer and Fernie again pushing that deep so it's 6 all good fight back here from the poles they were in a bit of trouble having lost the first set and Chikoska it's frustrated. She's hitting long, isn't she? Yes, she's not found a range yet. And that was fortunate there for Lee Fernie. Off the top of the net. Getting the bounce. 
Opens up a two-point advantage for the French, 8-6. But uh, she gives it right back, 8-7. And Zhao and Fernie now 9-7. No real response from the Poles at the moment, Farrell. Well, they're struggling at the moment, but there you go. Yeah. Fernie with the serve. Makayev goes, goes long, he's frustrated with himself. He just drifted away, good spin on that one. And two set points. Great shot from the young lady, Lee Fernie. Opens up the first set. And they'll be going back to their coaches to discuss that. First set, 11-8 to the French. Yeah, so the French now lead 2-0. I was having a senior moment there, wasn't I, Farrell? <laughs> Thinking it was the first set. Two sets to love the French in complete control. Yeah, and the Poles, are, they're, they're, not, they're not completely out of it, as we've seen um, the game against the... Um, we watched earlier when the Ukrainians were 2-0 up and the Poles came back to win 3-2. So they'll, you know, they'll just try and do the best they can. I think they probably need to put a bit more pressure on the French in terms of trying to win points rather than hoping that the French will miss the table. Yeah, the, uh, the French pairing have Antoine Zhao as a huge forehand, as you say, but uh, Lee Fernie has really brought some attacking flair to the French as well. Kuchowska goes into the net. Good serve there from Mikhail. One apiece. Super shot from Zhao again. Yeah, that's on the backhand this time as well. I wonder if he's um, got some East, some Chinese blood in him. They seem to be able to play table tennis for fun. Yeah, and the Poles have called the timeout. Yeah, 3-1 to the French. Two sets to love. It's just running away from them, isn't it? At this moment in time, it is, yeah. And the coach will probably try and give them a tactic to do to try and get back in the game. Well, we saw it in the last match, as you said. The Poles were two sets down and uh, managed to pull the victory out of the bag, winning the next three sets. Yeah, and they called the timeout in the third game, didn't they? Yeah. Eight, five down, I think it was. And then they went to win, um, they, they went on a run of an incredible number of points without reply. So, we're back. Finals on three tables all around us. Chikowska. But Zhao. Powerful. Yeah, he's so good at that. Anything that's half half loose, he, he's gonna try and get that forehand in. Let call. He wound up his forehand, Zhao yeah, again. Looking to wind <laughs> Clever shot, but Makayev responded to that well. Makayev, that was a fantastic response. 4 2 to the French. Oh! 
Yeah. Well, suddenly that comeback is on. 4-3. And Fernie finding it sec that second phase into the uh, into the passage of play. She just made two errors on the bounce there. But Tchaikovsky, the soft point. And then another error from Fernie there. So the Poles aren't out of this game just yet? No, nope, five all. Good serve from Fernie. Six five to the French. This third set. Now that was a brilliant shot there from Kaus. Six all. Tchaikovsky to serve, keeping the poles very much in the fight. Oof. The speed of that anticipation, Zhao executed as well. Almost like a badminton player right at the net. Oof, uh, just mistimed it. Yeah, he's clipped it. I think he's clipped he's the edge. He's clipped the edge, you're right. I had not. It went that quick, I don't think. Um, yeah, just clipped the edge. 8 6. Zhao. Ooh, and. Uh, Service error. Uh, not good. Wow, what a return from Makiev. And he puts his fists up in. In celebration of that is really good return. So it's eight points apiece now. Oof, almost got it back from Zhao, but Zhao, it's <laughs> it's a hell of a shot. Wow. What a return from Makiev and deserves that for his defensive effort. And 9 0. It is. Explosive from uh, Zhao, but Makayev, wow. Great defensive returns. No! Oh, that short one. twice. His reactions are so quick. He's so up for it. it. And 11-9 to the Polish and they've come back again just as you predicted well they took a time out and whatever they've done they've, they've won the third game and now um, the momentum's with them and Makayev is just beginning to read the Zhao forehand and it's coming back with some bells on it it is he's, he's picking it up really well and his reaction time is really good Certainly watching from these replays. Oh, we're not seeing the shot we thought. There it is. Look at that. Tremendous response. Great agility there from Makav Makayev. The pairings return to the table. The French still have the 2-1 advantage. And it'll be interesting to see if the Polish pair can carry on with the momentum and take this into the fourth game. For another cracker. Oof. Interesting table tennis there. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were, they were going to smash it and they just dropped it on the table. So they had to rush in. Um. And the French 
Open the two point advantage very quickly there. Two one. Great there from Makayev. Celebrates the winner with a fist in the air as well. Oh, and he just couldn't get his back round that one, could he? No. Pushed him wide, well wide, 4-2. Perhaps if it was Chinovsky's side, he would have he would have got it, would he? Yeah, well, he's got the range, hasn't he, Chinovsky? Very tall, rangy player. Well, but Makayev looks quite tall and rangy as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he's tall, but I don't think he's as tall as Janowski. No, definitely not. Yeah, they, they keep, they're just keeping the, uh, within touching distance of the French at the moment. 4-3, the Poles trail. But now it's 4-all. And yeah, <laughs> the French are cracking. But uh, it didn't look as if they had... Oh, and there's Zhao with one of them shots. They keep him out of the game. They've got every chance yeah, of taking that, his set. Exactly, but it's keeping him out of the game. Well, they did. They pushed that one very wide. And Zhao couldn't get across. Very clever from the Poles. Five all. Oh, Tchaikovsky. First rule was to... Make sure you're in place for return. I'm surprised Yao actually pushed that now. I thought it would have got him, but he seemed to sort of just float it back. And Lee Fernie pushes one away down the side and the Poles are leading back 7-6. Super shot from Makov. Wow. I mean, he's played a few of those though, so they're not, they're not lucky shots. He's actually, he's actually telegraphing the, the ball really well. And so the French have called the timeout. They haven't, they 6-8, having led 2-0. Yeah. I, think, I think the Poles do this on purpose actually now. It's beginning to be... I understand it, so it's you might as well join it in the third set because it's two 0 down, and then they keep coming back. It's incredible. It's as if they need they need a couple of sets just to get into the match. And yeah, but it's like they weren't even in the first two um, games. They were they were just out of it, and then he, they've called the time out, and all of a sudden they're eight six up in the third. Huh? All very calm in the coaches' corners. So the players are returning to the table after their minute break. Can the French pull back these two deficit points? No. A quick point there for the Poles. They go 9-6. The comeback is very much on. Oh, my. I think he's running back to Poland to celebrate that Oh, shot. my. <laughs> he's taken that board out. But incredible shot. Just that, an that, incredible shot. That was an amazing shot. Yeah. 
10-6. The Poles have brought back a two-set deficit, just like their previous partners in the last final. One point, and they have leveled up the game. And Zhao just shows that he's still here, he's awake. Hasn't been able to impose himself on this match as much as Makayev has begun to do so. And that was and another <laughs> stunning shot! <laughs> <laughs> Makayev to win it as well, to win this fourth game. So from being 2 0 down, it's called a timeout in the third game, and they've stormed to victory in the fourth. It is incredible. This, the guy is just on fire at the moment. And uh, I mean, Zhao started off so hotly, and now Makayev. 11 6, 11 8, 9 11, 7 11. It's just <laughs> what a fifth set we're in for. Yes, we are. We're in for a very good fifth set. But nobody's, um, none of the teams have got timeouts now. Well, that's true. <laughs> and there's a, another better one to come. There it is. I think Mackey hardly can believe he's doing it himself sometimes when you look at his uh, gestures. It's just pure instinct. They've done well to claw it back. Well, the French are looking a little bit dismayed. They were very much in control. But now it's been done unto them by this Polish pair. Straight away mistakes. You think they're in the heads now? And it's another serve. Wow. It's an incredible turnaround. Well, they're fallible. Yeah. There's uh, Chikowska. But she has to go for it. She can't give um, Zhao an easy ball. He's, but it, although he's missed that. He's well. missed that. He's gone long. And uh, he's probably feeling impatient, feeling frustrated he can't get into the game. Zhao gets that finger up, finger up into the air. Makiev almost defended it well. Indeed, it just had a bit too much on him, um, topspin on, on the ball for him to get it on the table. 3 2 to the poles, 4 2. 3 all, sorry, my misunderstanding. 3 all the score. He's out to serve. And that time, the French with the point. Mackey have just a little bit long. Again, <laughs> Mackey, he's, he's producing shots from all over the table that are absolutely incredible. A stunning shot. And Tchaikovsky goes long. So it's 5-4 to Zhao and Fernley. And the players will swap round now in terms of the table to make everything fair for the fifth game. Zhao comes in to serve. The French 6-4 in, ooh, super shot from Fernie. And uh, 
Makiev didn't even have a chance to respond. So a three-point advantage for the French. They have done well to regroup, Farrell. They have done really well. They have done well to regroup, especially after the first two games. There you go, Zhao with that backhand yes. again. He set that up well, didn't he? He did. And the French take a two a two point lead. Seven five. And is the same about to happen? The French were three up, now one up only. Let called. Tension. Oh, saw the spin in that one from Zhao, didn't you? Yeah, there was uh, a lot of spin on that. She just misread it. 8-6, we're getting down to the complete business end of this final. Yeah, anything, any slight mistake will be capitalised on, I think. Oh, Zhao. Just needed to get it in rather than provide the killer punch. Went for it again. Just didn't seem... He's not had the best of sets this set. Eight apiece now, the Poles all the way back. And once again, Zhao. Three mistakes by the French. And the Poles could be going to a remarkable victory. Oh, and they got the edge of the table. It and suddenly, be. suddenly, two match points for the Poles who've trailed this set virtually the entire time. And Zhao with three consecutive errors at crucial times. I mean, you don't want to put it on the man, but they were big three points. <clears throat> Ooh, well defended. All sorts of stuff happening there. The let and everything. So defended well by the French. And it was Leif Fernie who... Made the finishing shot. Yeah, absolutely did. Going down to the wire. What a defence there from... Oh, oh, and Fernie and twice. <laughs> Defence there from Zhao was amazing. Ten all. Ten apiece. Well, the French had the momentum, then the Poles came back. All square. And Zhao just struggling to find his range, isn't he? He is. And, um, so this is the third match point for the French. Will Mackey have looked to win it? Oh, and Lee Fernie hits or miss hits. The Poles have done it again. Well, that's just incredible. We have witnessed two set comebacks. To three to two victories by the last two pole pairings. And Makayev can rightly say, I was right involved with that one. He has been enormous. Yeah, and um, Tchaikovsky did her bit as well. But some of the shots that Makayev was playing, just... It's stunning. Absolutely yeah. stunning. You should do a highlight reel of all those shots. <laughs> Incredible. But it's just another one of those. There it is, one of those shots. It's just one of those games where 2 0 down, they came back to win 3 2. 11 6, 11 8, 9 11, 7 11, 10 12. What a game. And if um, people were in um, doubt about how a timeout can be a positive change for, for a team, 
stopped and they've just proved it again. Incredible. Well, congratulations to the French pairing. They've got the silver, but bigger congrats go to the Poles who once again pull the rabbit out of the hat for the gold medal in the mixed doubles class 22. They will be smiling all the way home and they're going to be hearing the Polish national anthem a lot. See you shortly.
So, a moment's breath and we're back again for the final actions here at table six where we have the class of 17 mixed doubles finals and uh, what a battle Hungary Shonka and Svitac and Grudzian who's just won a gold medal in a pairing haven't they Grudzian and Peck for Poland and already it's an explosive um, encounter all four players are very good at playing um, big top spins away from the table with lots of side spin as well so it'll be an interesting matchup well Grudgen and uh, Peck they just beat Hansen and Handen from Sweden and the Hungarians well, they beat Nikolenko and Shinkarova from the Ukraine in the semi-finals that was a four-setter whereas the Poles were comfortable in a three-set to love victory against the Swedes so just looking at the rankings it's surprisingly the Polish who are ranked first and we could be looking at the third medal here on this table potentially uh, for the Poles, yeah. Well, what normally happens, uh, let me explain, Farrell, is that the Hungarians will go two sets to love up. And, um, you know, just in case you're getting bored, it'll be a 3 2 victory for the Poles, I would imagine. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I mean, if the Poles win the first set, we're, we're, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what they'll do. Oh, dear. So, uh, I've just noticed that the Polish coach. Um, has just walked by behind us, so they're not they're not coaching this particular pair. Must be a different coach. Yeah, I mean they've got quite a few coaches for different teams because they've got a big squad. Be looking out for the medals table after the tournament is over. I would imagine the Polish team will be right up there. And in terms of the, the British performances at these championships, Farrell, you pleased with how the medals have uh, spun out so far? I think it's at least 10. Yeah, I think um, there have be some, been some really good performances from the Great Britain squad. And, um, you know, they, they'll be disappointed that they didn't do as well in the um, doubles as they, they wanted. But... I think they picked up eight singles medals of varying colours and, and obviously Will Bailey won the gold um, but we got um, I think it was two, three silvers and four bronzes in the singles Yeah. and um, we picked up a couple of other medals in the doubles but um, the, it, overall it's not been a bad sort of tournament for the Great Britain squad but they want to improve and uh, move on to Paris and win a few more medals I think yeah I heard that uh, the chair of uh, BPTT was saying I think it was something like 7 was the target for medals and looks as if 7 to 10 10 being the stretch yeah I think we've I probably um, I think we've probably won about 12 medals in total oh well, that's going to be a good outcome Anyway, meantime, here at the action on the table, um, uncharacteristically, Poland 9-5 up in the first set. Absolutely. Maybe they just got bored of doing it in five, maybe. And that brings on the 10th point for the Poles, 10-5, this to clinch the first set. And it certainly got us confused up here in the commentary box. And that's 11-5, very efficient from the Polish team. Feeling probably very confident. Peck and Partika have also featured before in the women's doubles, having won that one as well. Yes, yeah, so, so you've got two poles here who are going for second gold, their second gold medals. 
But I don't think this. I think this has potential to go to five games. Um, Svitox and Zonka are very good players, and I think um, you know that. Like most games, you know, the first game has to go somewhere. But um, you know, I, I can quite see this this game actually going to five sets. There's the replay action on the table. Superb athleticism and shot control and deft touches. It's a super sport, super sport. Just need a really big dining room, don't you? <laughs> That's how we used to play it on our dining room table. And can I admit I've got an outdoor table tennis table at our house? Do you use it? Yeah, it's out there now in the summer. We use it. Oh I keep beating my six-year-old son to death on it. <laughs> no, he's 13, actually. But uh, Time will come when those victories will turn around. Yeah, good start there from the Hungarians. 1 0 up. Chonka just a little bit long there. It's a very intelligent player, has been moving the ball side to side. Good shot there from Chonka. But. Just a bit long, and the Poles 2 1 up. Long from Peck on that occasion. To all. Well, they'll be better, they'll be pleased with this start, the Hungarians, actually. They didn't start their first game too well. So they'll be happy they've settled down. Yeah, beginning to be in the rhythm, more in the rhythm. Oh, super shot from Shonka there. Huge amount of top spin on that one. Yeah, and he put, put some side spin on it as well, so it just curved away outside the table. So 4-2, the Hungarians, they've come back into it. What a great exchange, and Gudjan, what a phenomenal shot. Yeah, stretching everything, put everything into that shot. Um, Three socks just made the, made the error. Yeah, it's uh, beginning to rank up. Everybody's game picking up now. It's a bit of a soft first set, but this is the real deal now. Oh, and the net got in the way and took it long. And Zonka there just um, giving himself some encouragement. Yep. Zonka quietly. Very influential. Good save it? there from Peck. Lots of backspin on the ball. And Schritt... Schwitax is a, I mean, she's an imposing athlete, isn't she? She's long reach. Oh, and Shanka. Disappointed with that. And five all. The Poles pull back those three point deficits. Oh, we'll be disappointed he missed that completely. Okay. A little bit anxious, he seemed to be there before, through the shot before the ball had arrived. What a tremendous rally. Oh, fantastic from the Polish pair there. 
it looked at one point as they were outside the rally and then all of a sudden they've won the point. Shankar looking really disappointed there. Face of thunder as she walked to the camera. Five seven the trail having had a three point advantage. Oh beautiful pick from Peck there. Very strong. Peck. Very quick to seize on that opportunity. Cross court. And suddenly five eight they've opened up in a a really good advantage. Oh and Shwitech. Looks very just frustrated with herself. Yeah, just straining there. And from being 5 all, they've lost four points on the bounce. Just don't seem to be communicating as a pair, not exactly bouncing off each other. It's uh, fair to say that mixed doubles haven't always been around a lot, so depends how much these pairings are you know, regular players. Yeah, mixed doubles hasn't been in the um, program for that long, maybe a, maybe a couple of years now. Yeah. Super That's shot better. from Shonka, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right in the corner, curving away. And they'll be, they should be encouraged by that, the, the Hungarian pair. 7-9. Been a much better competitive set than the first. And, yes, uh, it has. They're building into it. I mean, they've let a lead slip, but they can still get back in this game. And Switech, she knows. Just perhaps not positive enough with that. Yeah, it's. It's very difficult because the, the the serves are very tight and she's trying she's frustrated so she's trying to to force the issue in terms of trying to get the ball on but sometimes you just have to make sure you get the ball back on the table otherwise you're just giving cheap points and two cheap points regrettably there from Shritax has allowed the Poles to have a two set advantage which is something that they're not used to Certainly not in finals we watch, and um, but a really good start. I mean, the, the Poles have been the, the best pairing in this match so far. Um, Zonka changing his shirt there, so maybe a change of shirt might change his fortune as well. It's a warm and hot environment. But, uh, the number one pair of Grudgeon and Peck. Are uh, well on the way at the moment to another medal. They'll be decorated at least twice, potentially. 2 0, but we've just had two consecutive finals go from 2 0 to 3 2 to the opponents. But on that occasion, it was the Poles who were behind on both occasions. This time, the Hungarians are going to have to do. The huge rock climb. So both pairings back to the table for the third game. Peck and Grudgin. Super Rally. Super Rally and the Hungarians came out on top then. And they're going to have to do more of that if they want to get back into this game. Yep. There's a little bit of a let call on that one, but one all. The Poles got the advantage. <laughs> Super shot from Grudgeon. Oh no, Peck, sorry. Yeah. And 
Svitac just long again. She's she struggled to get into the game, the Hungarian. She's a uh, tall, imposing figure. Super rally. And it wouldn't surprise me if the um, Hungarian coach calls the timeout. Oh, yeah, right there, right on cue. I mean, needs the Hungarians to be perhaps playing the game of their lives to uh, to actually move forward. Yeah, I think um, there's always there's always a chance now that they will. Um, you know that Grutzen and Pecht may suffer from that as well. So um, they're only three points behind. So they want a good start when they come back to the um, when they come back to the table. I mean, it's 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 really all or nothing now for the Hungarians. But this we've seen before today. Keep saying it. We have two amazing comebacks, and it is possible. I just We've seen two of them <laughs> in succession. I haven't seen any fallibility in Peck and Grusin at the moment. They seem quite, quite in control. And. Uh, if she watches this game back she'll know it's a, a game of such near misses yeah that's um, that's good in serves and again it's and such then, a fine margin isn't yeah, it yeah there is fine margins but they're, 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 their confidence will be high Six one. Uh, good oh, shot from, from Zonka. Zonka there. Yeah. Brilliant shot. Didn't try to power the ball back there. Used used all the spin from Peck to make sure the ball went on the table. A much needed point for the Hungarians. It's fascinating to see just how many Polish players, singles, doubles, the country is producing in power table tennis. And Svintac just, you could see with that gesture saying, I've, I don't know what else to do in this game, I just can't hit the table. It's back to serve. Again, they're just, they're so confident, the Poles at the moment, and it seems to have affected the way that the Hungarians are approaching the game. Schwintas has probably hit five consecutive ones just onto the top of the net. Well, there's a better response, and uh, the net playing a part in that one. So it's at 8-4, could the comeback be on for the Hungarians? Well, they put the effort in and switch touch. She's trying to get her way back into this match. She'd just love to play more consistently and Shonka hasn't been able to there. He That's no, they're not, um, they're not, just not flowing at the moment, the Hungarians. And that's partly due to the pressure that the Poles are putting on them when they're, they're playing their shots. 4-9 it would be a remarkable comeback from this position and there's one of them serve still with Grudgen 5-9 had a let 
Just trying to see how the pair behind the table are lining up. Oh, and long from Peck. Timeout being oh. called here by the Polish. Yep. I wonder what the coaching coaching uh, advice would be. Don't do what the French did. <laughs> they'll, they'll be saying to play their own game. At most of the they'll be saying to play their own game. Um, so, and just, I mean, calling the timeout now just gives them them a bit of a break, give a bit of breather, take some fluid on board. Yeah, they look pretty relaxed. Coach looks pretty relaxed. And, uh, you know, they've been playing consistently well. That's the difference, haven't they? They've just, that, yes, they play consistently that, that's, well. You've hit the nail on the head there, Yuri, that, that um, the Poles have been consistently good throughout the game. We've seen flashes of brilliance from the Hungarians, but it just hasn't been consistent enough. I'm sure there's plenty of stats on unforced errors or all that in table tennis. Oh, great, two great shots and look of the bounce for the Hungarians. But uh, Svitac, she made two great shots there, didn't she? She did. And then they got lucky on the third with from Zonka, but they've they're now two points, only two points behind. Oh, great defense, and Schwistach again gets that, and Peck goes long. Now suddenly Schwistach has hit three of her big shots in. That's right. And and now the deficit is only one. Still a big ask. Oh. Again, and that then she just placed the ball right into the peck body, and from being nine five down, they've come back to nine all. Well, super, super, super. Can never say it's over until it is, and nine all, and now the Hungarians have the tails up. Oh, and oh. seems to have a bat facing downwards, didn't she? It yeah, too too closed. Too closed, that's the word. So it is one match point. First, and can they take it, the Poles? Be a wonderful triple gold here. Oh, it was there a it super is. win. Super win. A second gold for both Peck and Grudzian. Yeah, there's, they were the much better pairing throughout and we saw, we saw a little bit of fight back from the Hungarians towards the end, of perhaps of what they could have been today, but they were outplayed in this final. Yeah, yeah, very... Um, they'll be disappointed with that as well because if they played like that when they had nothing to lose they could have probably done a bit better in the first two games so 11-5 yeah. 11-7 11, 11, 11 9 to the polish pair and grudgeon looking pleased he's been very consistent in this game yeah. and uh, a tremendous victory for the poles And we'll be going into the next match. And uh, sorry, it, it'll be the 750 medal ceremony presentations at uh, 10 to 6. And uh, but congratulations to the Polish pairing. And I think that answer, uh, Farrell is uh, the third set of gold medals tonight for the Poles here at EIS. It is, yes, in, in a row as well. It's um, incredible the way they've, they've played today. They played, they did deserve to win this game. Congratulations to the Poles, commiserations to, to the Hungarians and 
We'll be having a short break before we go into our medal presentations for the Mixed Doubles Class 4, Mixed Doubles Class 8 um, and uh, Doubles Class 22 and Doubles Class 20. Four medal presentations to follow shortly. We'll be having a break.
Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport for another medal presentation at the European Para Table Tennis Championships 2023. First up to the podium are our men's doubles class four medalists and it's uh, Jan Riaposz with Martin Ludrowski from Slovakia along with Tomasz Jakimczuk and Rafał Czuper from Poland with the bronzes. The silver will go to Iker Sastre and Michel Angel Toledo of Spain and our winners are Jul Julien Michaud and Fabien Lamiro from France. They'll get their medals from the hands of Mike Smith and Olivia Cody, both former board members of British Para Table Tennis. Once again, bronze medals for Jan Riaposz and Martin Ludrowski, along with Tomasz Jakimczuk and Rafał Czuper from Poland. Also presented with some Yorkshire tea to keep those memories going after coming home. The finalists and silver medalists from Spain, Iker Sastre and Miguel Angel Toledo. And our European champions in men's doubles four, representing France, Julien Michaud and Fabien Lamiro. A consolation for Fabien Lamiro after so closely losing his singles finals. And he will now, along with you all, get to enjoy the national anthem of France. Clearly enjoying that extra time on repetition of their national anthem, the European champions in men's double class four, Julien Michaud and Fabien Lamiro. Another moment to take a picture with the rest of the first historic medalists in men's doubles four at European Championships from Slovakia, Poland and Spain.
coming to the podium. We will be the best in Europe in men's doubles class 8. It's representing Turkey, Abdullah Öztürk and Nesim Turan, along with Mitar Palikuca and Mladen Ciric of Serbia, up to collect their bronzes. Silver goes to France with Maxime Thomas and Emric Marton. And the European champions from Germany, Thomas Schmidberger and Valentin Bauf, will be receiving their medals and Yorkshire tea from Norman Tang, ITTF evaluator, and Martin Clark, head of finance as British para table tennis. Congratulations for their bronze to Mitar Palikucha and Mladen Ciric from Serbia. The other semi-finalists also going home with their bronze medals from Turkey, Abdullah Öztürk and Nesim Turan. Vice champions of Europe and silver medalists representing France, Maxime Thomas and Emric Manton. The gold medals fought for and go to Thomas Schmidberger and Valentin Baus from Germany. In their honor, if you can, please stand for the national anthem of Germany. focused enjoying this moment as they were at the table Thomas Schmidberger and Valentin Baus the new the first men's doubles five European champions adding this gold medal to their two single medals earlier in the competition and another picture with their fellow competitors from Turkey and Serbia in the bronze position and in second place from France.
And now for the medal presentations of the mixed doubles class 22 here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. Our two bronze medalist nations are from the Ukraine, Valerie Vlasenko, Natalia Kuzmina, and from Poland, Damian Fira and Christina Leschak. The silver went to the French, Antoine Zhao and Leah Ferny for all the French. The gold was for the Poles, Makiej Makayev and Eva Chikowska. And our presentation party, our medalists are being greeted by Mike Smith, a former member of the British Para Table Tennis Board. And we have Kim Laws, our British Para Table Tennis Independent Director, and Sean Newcomb, Chairman of Selectors from British Para Table Tennis. Two bronze recipients there, the Ukrainians, Blasenko and Kuzmina, and from Poland, Fira and Lysiak. And now over to our silver medalists from France. They were two sets to love up. The French were four, and then finally overtaken in the final set by the Poles. That was the second of two matches on court six where the Polish pair came back from the dead having been two sets down but a fantastic display from Makiev and Chikowska to win the gold for the Polish team and Makiev was just outstanding in that final the Polish team receiving their medals from Sean Newcomb Chairman of Selectors for all the British Para Table Tennis Association and Kim Laws behind him, the independent director of the BPTT and we'll be now following that with the Polish national anthem. Poland with eight golds in this tournament so far are the leading nation by a long way. Congratulations to our medalists and particularly to the Polish gold medalists. And as we mentioned before, eight golds for the Polish team so far. And they'll be very pleased with that uh, bright array of medals. They have 13 in total so far, with three more to be decided. And France lead all medalists with 17 in total though they only have the three the two golds sorry two golds and 17 medals in total Now we have the mixed doubles class 20 where there's a gold and silver medal presentation and the presenting party includes the games director, the European Championship event director John Timms from MLS, assisted by Maurice Hamilton, a board member of the British Para Table Tennis Association and silver medals go to the French. Matteo Bojeas, 
and Thu Kamkasothu, and uh, the French with the medals in silver, but the gold medalists and quite an outstanding pairing from Poland, Patrick Chojnowski and Natalia Parteka, who as two para-athletes are just outstanding, outstanding table tennis players. And the Poles once again with a gold. And Natalia Parteka having competed in the Olympics and represents Poland national team in the able-bodied tennis. And now the national anthem of Poland. Congratulations to our medalists. Photographs now underway. Our Polish champions, Patrick Chojnowski and Natalia Parteka. And in silver place, the two French athletes, Mateo Bojeas and Thu Kankasopfu. We'll be now returning to competition. There's three more medalists and finals to determine. The competition goes on.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the final action of table six and three finals being played on court out there here in the Institute of, Institute of Sport in Sheffield. And we're down to the last day, last match. Farrell, it's been a great tournament. And we now have the amazing Parteka and Peck from Poland versus Demir and Kavas from Turkey for the Class 20 women's doubles. One more to go, another medal at stake. That's right, and it's been a fantastic six days of table tennis here in Sheffield. Um, I, I'm a Sheffield boy, so it's, it's really nice to have um, this kind of tournament, um, a major tournament in my home city and uh, in the Inst English Institute of Sport as well, which is the home of British Table Tennis. Um, there's been some fantastic matches and uh, this is the last commentary match for, for us this, um, in this sort of uh, time. And uh, I'm looking forward to this match. Um, Partica and Peck, they uh, will be the number one seeds. And uh, against Demir and Kavas from Turkey, um, who've We've also, Turkey have had a very good tournament as well. The Poles have had a brilliant tournament in terms of uh, medals. Very strong nation and um, you know, I'm looking forward to this game. Yep, the Turks have eight medals um, so far and uh, they, they could be finishing up with nine. Oh, they will be because somebody will be taking a medal home. Um, whether, what colour will it be, gold or silver? That's right. So... The amazing Parteka, who's multiple times a champion. First blood is there for the Poles. And 2 0. Good start for the Polish pair today. Peck serves. Parteka, a good response. Wow, brilliant a from Demir. Super She's a left-hander and she played it down the line, but she played with side spin as well. So it was going always going away from the Polish pair. Long there from Parteka. Yeah, she's very strong. I mean. All these players have got very strong forehands, so um, it's going to be quite an interesting matchup. Well, the, uh, the Turkish pair are really into this one, they're fighting every inch, no easy points here so far. Both poles are left-handed. Interesting. Bravo. Right and a left-hand combination for the Turks. Ooh, and the, the opportunity there for Turks just to take a 4-2 advantage it just went long great serve on Partica there came round the ball with a little bit of side spin just to take it off the edge so that Cavas couldn't get the ball Cavas to serve oh Partica Parted the waves there, right down the middle of both athletes. Yeah, fantastic. She, Patrick is very good on both wings, very strong, very athletic, very quick. Uh, both players ending up in the same corner for the poles, but they, they make the point and 7-3 very quickly. Established a strong lead in the first set. You were saying, um, Farrell, that Parteka has been playing for some 20 years or so? 
already? Yeah, yeah. She, she, she. I first met her as a 12-year-old in Sydney, 2012 in Sydney 2000. She was 12, and but she was very good then as a 12-year-old. You could tell that she was going to, um, if she carried on training hard and working hard, which she obviously has done. Um, and she's gone on to win multiple major medals. And like I said, she's she's unique in the fact that she's. I don't know how many players have done it, but she's actually represented Poland at the Paralympics and the Olympic Games. That's incredible. And represents a national team. Um, in able-bodied and para-tennis. Oh, super shot there. That was a great Fantastic finish. response there from the Turks very precise into the corner and that's what they're going to have to do if they want to try and win this game today yeah, just a little not not a whole swing there but a short backhand lots of power generated but it's 9-5 Kavas to receive Oh, uh, she went big, went too big. Yeah, she went big, but the spin was going that way as well, so it took it off the table. Well, well she got lucky there. She did. She'll take it, though. Yeah, she acknowledged a good fortune, though, and that's um, it's always good in table tennis to acknowledge a bit of luck. 10-6, so the pole's on the brink of the first set. And Cavas goes long with the serve. Yeah, they didn't have to work for the point either. So 11-6. Difficult first set for the Turks, but perhaps they can reflect on that, improve, and uh, up their ante. Well, that's what the, their coach will be saying. You know, you know, it's the first game. Park that and let's go again. Um, the, po uh, the poles, in, but in the meantime, will say, "Well, that's quite comfortable, but don't get complacent, because we've seen, as we've seen all week, and we've we've commentated on two matches that were two where the team was two zero up, and then they lost three two. So things can turn round very quickly. Indeed, that is the case, and uh, in the medal standings." After today's competition and after the six days of competition, I think Team GB will be pleased with 11 medals. Just the one gold, but still acquiring a number of medals there. 11, which is the third highest total at these championships uh, behind the Poles and the French. Yeah, very good result. Oh, and uh, Demir just struggling to get the ball there, just clipped the net and fell off the end. Good effort to try, though. She did try. Yes. Oh, what a rally that was. Powerful from the Poles and good defence from the Turks. But exciting stuff. And Cavas just leaning in, missed their opportunity. Yeah, she tried to get really over the ball because she knew it was loads of lots of topspin on the ball, but she just missed it. Oh. And Demir almost made an impossible return there. That ball was very, very spinny on the table, lots of arc. Lots of heavy rotation. The Poles just managed to win the point. Oh. Fortune favours the brave there, Demir. Yeah, you've got to you've got to you need a bit of luck now and again. Aye. As they say. Standing well back from the table. 
Uh, did well That's with the return. brilliant there. She shaped to go into the, with the forehand, but then she turned to her backhand and flicked it. Very good. When she, um, Demir got to the final of the Class 10 women's singles, and she lost to Partica, which played very well. Phillips, an excellent player. Super sharp. Not much you can do with that, is there? No, just a, just a just a great winner. Wow, Again. the pair worked well there, didn't they? The poles. They did. They what they're doing is that when the ball starts to spin, the, the time the Turks up, the Turks are scrambling around trying to get the ball. It's a very dominant performance from the pole so far. And at that time, Cavas went for the early kill and probably a little bit of frustration and being outplayed so far. And they're down 7 2 in the second set. Demir is frustrated. Yeah, they're still trying and they're trying to get, they're trying to put the poles under pressure. It's just not working right now. Oh, the poles are just incredible. Look at those returns from the Turks and still it's not coming back with a point. Explosive table tennis, explosive shots and the Turks are just being bombarded. That's another but that's good shot there. That's a fantastic there. shot from Cabas. Yeah. Patrick wasn't expecting that. It went right in the corner. Super shot. And they're having to play every inch of the table to try and gain the ascendancy. as if did that click the table it did yeah, it did it yeah and uh, Demir just acknowledged that as well 4-9 Turks hanging in there Oof, great return from Peck 10-4 Demir with the serve. Re oh, and she changed that service, didn't she, from a back to a forehand? Yeah. And it's very difficult for the Turkish pair at the moment. The, the poles are very dominant. They're looking to get him strong all the time and put pressure on the Turkish players, which is, and, and it's working. Well, there's not a lot that the... Uh, the Polish are just playing a great game and it's so complete and uh, the Turks are trying to live with it but they're not just trying to succumb to, to, vic to victory are they? They're, they're actually trying to take the game to the Poles but the Poles are just that much better at the moment. At the, at, as I'm going to say at the moment <laughs> because as we've seen before things can change very quickly and as long as they keep trying they'll always think they'll have a chance. 2 tall athletic players for the Polish players you know so we're going to have the start of the third game the Poles will want to continue where they left off and um, the Turkish pair will want to see if they can actually put some pressure on the Poles to get them to start missing and winning points And it'll be Cavas to serve, I think. Cavas ready with the ball. Gets an early point. Went very, very good serve. Very good serve. Very good serve. Right, just over the net. Very wide. There's another one. Oof. Peck had the right idea, she just couldn't lift, sorry, Demir had the right idea then, um, playing it back 
to where Peck was serving to make it awkward for Partica to get the ball. Partica goes long. 2-1 to the Turks. Recovery there from Poles. Demir. Demir just saw the opportunity and she'll be frustrated because she knew that was an opportunity to win a point. Like you said, she's a she's a wonderful player, Demir. And just, you know, the margins slightly out for her at the moment, but And it is a game of fine margins, Yuri. That's the that's the thing. That, you know, she is she's going for the optimum return on the table she's not just playing safe she's trying to make sure that it's more difficult for the poles and sometimes oh long from Bratica unusual yeah. and uh, the Turks take a 4-2 lead and they'll be happy with that yeah you know they'll you know they'll try and keep um, the pressure on now Demir couldn't respond to that one. Yeah, good opening up from Peck there. Trying to return, going backwards. Partica just telling her partner what um, surf she's going to do. And, and again, Partica, she's missed. Yeah, took the top of the net, went long. So 5-3. Turks living with the poles now. Got a measure of this power and precision of the poles, finding a way to deal with it. Cavas. Very strong backhand from Partica there. 5 4. Super shot from Demir that time. Even Partica couldn't respond. Yeah. And this is good from the, the Turkish pair now. They're really putting pressure on the Poles to, and, and, and making strong shots so the Polish pair are making errors. And Peck and Partica have been playing a lot of tennis today. Uh, Table tennis. Good shot from Partica. Right at Cavus. All she could do was try and parry that back, but too much power and spin on the ball. Oh, and Cavus going for the angles. Like you say, they, they're trying to win this and they're taking the very high risk shots to win it. Yeah, but that's what they need to do. You can't just put the ball back on the table because. The Poles are so good at just capitalising on weak balls. Six apiece, having led by three, they've been pulled back to six all. Can they be more consistent? That's a quick shot from Partica, wasn't it? Just a yeah, she's looking. She's looking for the 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 ball to attack all the time. So. And they've called the timeout, which I think is sensible at this point. Well, the Turks just need to see if they can stay in this one. It's, uh, you know, win one more, win a set and get a foothold in the game. That's right. And the coach is just explaining what he wants them to do. He's um, you know, taking some fluid on board as well. But this is much more competitive from Demir and Kavas. And they'll be encouraged by that. The coach will be as well. Um, it's, it seems as if, um, you know, it takes that time to get into the standard of the Partica Peck partnership. And they probably don't play anybody as good as that regularly. And so after a couple of sets, they now understand the pace at which they have to play. And I mean, they were playing at high standard. It's just that the poles came out of the blocks really quickly and sometimes that can upset a pairing but they've managed to settle it down and hopefully they can you know they can um, they can nick this game
Well, oh, they, got, they got lucky, but uh, took the risk and, and got lucky. Partica just tried. She didn't know how much spin was on the ball, so she just tried to guide it back, but there was very little spin after it hit the net. Seven apiece. Yeah, just explaining what surf she's going to do for Peck. But that's Ooh. brilliant from Cabas. Yeah. So Super shot. The Turks very much into this third set. And if they could take it, it would make the game really interesting. Poised. Oh, and yeah, loads of spin from Peck there on the backhand. Hard to control, and Demir drifted long, but it's eight all. Cavas to serve. Super shots. Oh, it just. It was an arcing ball from Partica and. She had to go for it and she just missed it. She was also falling backwards, but it's 9 8 to the poles. Great return. And Demir. So frustrated, she was almost back there with the cameras, that far back from the table, and it's 10 8. The party could keep the ball away there to give themselves some more time. <laughs> Very cheeky. <laughs> yeah. Well, two match points for the Poles. The Turks have really given it some challenge in this third. And, and there it is. Peck takes it cleanly. And another gold medal for Peck and Partika. And you could argue that was fully deserved, wasn't it? Yeah, they, they weren't troubled at all. I mean, well, in the, in the third set, they scored, but the first two sets, they were just very dominant and um, overall deserved to win. Um, the Turkish player will be happy with the um, silver, but they'll know they should have done better and they could have done better. And um, Partica all smiles. That's the third gold medal of these games. And um, she's showing why she's the... You know, she has been, which I don't think she's world number one at the moment, but I'm sure after this, she probably will go back to world number one. I think she's number two, but uh, right up there. But congratulations to Partika and Peck from Poland. Yet another gold for the Polish squad. And Demir and Kavas will be picking up the bronze and will be doing those medals once the remaining finals on court come to a conclusion. Thank you, Farrell, for all your efforts all this week. Thank you very much. It's been fantastic. I've loved it. It's been a great exhibition of table tennis, a great festival. And, um, you know, it's uh, nice to be in the hometown of Sheffield as well. So I'm sure your dulcet tones has brought the British team some <laughs> luck as well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Farrell. And we'll be joining you at around 7 o'clock for the final medal presentations.
Welcome to the one last act of the European Para Table Tennis Championships 2023 here in Sheffield. And it's the medal presentations for the mixed doubles four that are first coming up onto the stage. Bronzes to Serbia and Italy in this category. Silver for Poland and gold to Italy as well. The wonderful medals and some Yorkshire tea will be presented by Tina Krota, ITTF manager and match official. And the two bronze medals, first of all, go to Goran Perlic and Anna Pervulovic for Serbia. As well as to the other semi-finalists, Federico Falco and Carlotta Ragazzini representing Italy. In second place for the silver, two singles European champion, Rafal Cuper and Dorota Butzlau from Poland. And our first ever mixed doubles for European champions, Federico Crossara and Giada Rossi from Italy. In their honor, please enjoy and if you can stand up for the national anthem of Italy. and congratulations once again to mixed doubles class four medal winners coming from Serbia, Italy, Poland and once again from Italy. A picture to extend the memories and a proud moment for all these as they become the first ever European champions and medalist in mixed doubles class four.
Coming up to the podium next are the best in Europe in mixed doubles class 7. Representing Turkey, Abdullah Öztürk and Negris Altintas, as well as representing Croatia, Tomislav Spal and Angela Muzinic Vincetic, will be picking up bronzes in second place for Serbia, Mladen Ciric and Borislava Peric Rankovic, and gold will go to Germany to Thomas Bruchle and Sandra Mikolasek. The wonderful medals designed and representing the emblem of these championships along with Yorkshire Tea will be presented by Thomas Varga, ITTF competition manager for these European championships. And he's already given the first two to Tomislav Spal and Angela Muzinic Vincetic from Croatia. The second semi finalists and bronze medalists, Negris Altintas and Abdullah Öztürk from Turkey. Wise European champions and silver medalists come from Serbia. Mladen Ciric and Borislava Peric Rankovic. And the world champions in this mixed doubles seven retain the European crown as well. Gold for Germany and Thomas Oliver Brüchle and Sandra Mikolasek. In the winner's honor, let's enjoy the national anthem of Germany. One more round of applause and a picture opportunity for the European champions in mixed double seven. Coming from Germany, Thomas Oliver Brüchle and Sandra Mikolasek. Joined on the podium by the rest of the medalists with their silvers, Mladen Ciric and Borislava Peric Rankovic of Serbia as well as the semi-finalists with their bronzes from Croatia and Turkey. And now for the medal ceremonies for the mixed doubles
for the class of 14 here at the para european championships our athletes approach the podium positions and in bronze medal positions we have the groups from poland maxim chutziki and katarzyna marshall and for france it's clement bertier and morgan caillou and in silver from the netherlands holland jean paul matunas and van zon kelly van zon and the gold medalists are victor didu and marina Likovchenko. And our medal presentation is being made by Mohamed Eldawalati, who is the technical manager of the European Championships. And our bronze medalists of Poland, Chudziki and Marshall, receive theirs. And now for Betier and Caillou of France. The two semi-finalists and the silver medal the dutch pairing of jean paul martinus and kelly van zon and the gold medalists having a very good championships the ukrainians of victor diduch and Marina Litochenko. <laughs> Presentations, as mentioned, made by Mohamed Eldawalati from the ITTF and technical manager of the European Championships. And we now have the national anthem of the Ukraine. Congratulations to our medalists. And that was the mixed doubles, class 14. As the medalists group together for their official photo for memories going forward. A hug there between the UK Ukrainian pairing of Diduch and Litovchenko. Very pleased to take another gold. Medals come thick and fast. And the next medal ceremony is for the mixed doubles, class 17. And the medal presentations will be by the head referee of the European Championships here, Francesco Nuzzo. And we have in bronze medal positions, the Swedes of Jonas Hansen and Anja Handen, and for the Ukraine, Maxim Nikolenko and Irena Shinkarova. And in silver, the Hungarians, Andras Shonka, Alexa Svitac, and in gold, it's the Poles, Piotr Grudzian and Karolina Peck. So bronze, first of all, to the Ukrainians, who have just come off the podium in gold, and here they pick up a bronze. Maxim Nikolenko 
and Irina Shinkarova. Francesco Muzzo giving out the medals and the obligatory Yorkshire tea, which they'll be brewing on their way home. And for the Swedes, Anja Handen and Jonas Hansen. And the silver medalists, Andras Stonka and Alexa Svitach. They've battled hard, but the Poles, as we watched, were just too strong in this particular match. And clearly, the best pair in the competition, the gold medalists in these mixed doubles in class 17 to a very, very talented Polish team of Piotr Grunzen and Karolina Peck. And we now await the Polish national anthem. Congratulations to all the medalists in the mixed doubles, class 17, just having their photographs taken, congratulations to all, and I hand back to Matea Pintar for the next medal presentations. The next medalists coming up to the podium are from women's doubles, five to 10. Picking up their bronzes will be representing France, Flora Vautier and Alexandra Saint-Pierre, joined by Michela Brunelli and Giada Rossi of Italy, as well as the silver medalists, Nada Matic, and Borislava Peric Rankovic, as well as most importantly, the new European champions, Helena Deritar Karic and Angela Muzinic Vincetic from Croatia. Their medals, along with some Yorkshire tea to make the memories last longer from home will be presented by Kim Laws, British Para Table Tennis Independent Director. Congratulations to bronze medalists Michela Brunelli and Giada Rossi of Italy. And another round of bronze medals go to Flora Vautier and Alexandra Saint-Pierre representing France. The silver medals will be going home with Nada Matic and Borislava Peric Rankovic to Serbia. And the, will, the European champions and gold medalists in women's doubles 5 to 10. Coming from Croatia, Helena Deritarkaric and Angela Muzinic Vincetic.
in their honor. If you can, please stand, but in each case, enjoy the national anthem of Croatia. Tears of joy and smiles on the faces of the European champions in women's doubles 5 to 10. Helena Dretar Karic and Angela Muzinic Vincetic from Croatia. Joined on the podium here for one more picture to take home by the Serbians winning silver as well as the bronze medalists from Italy and France. And now for the next medal presentations. Thank you to Matea Pintar, who leaves us after six days of commentary. And we have the medal presentations for the women's doubles class 20. And these medal presentations will be made by Goraj Veko, the director of the para performance team here at the British Para Table Tennis Championships. Goraj becoming a legend here and our medal groupings are the two bronzes in from the Ukraine and Hungary silver will be going to Turkey and the gold yet again to Poland and for Hungary Alexa Zvitac and then Sofia Arloy in bronze Back on the podium for the Ukraine. Irina Shinkarova picks up another medal. And Marina Litovchenko. And Litovchenko, only just recently in the last or recent medal ceremony, having a successful time with another bronze. Ukraine right up there with the top echelons of para table tennis good hoarding of medals and for silver from Turkey Merv Demir and Neslihan Kavas they try to battle valiantly in that uh, defeat to the Poles who were just absolutely sublime the gold medalists from Poland Natalia Partika and Karolina Peck both in very 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 good athletes um, as you know Natalia Partika has competed for the Polish table tennis team in the Olympics and in the Paralympics and continues to compete for a Polish national team as an able and para athlete. Congratulations to Poland. And once again, we will hear the national anthem of Poland.
Congratulations to all our medalists and to Poland. So Hungary and the Ukraine with their bronze and silver to Turkey, gold to Poland, beautiful medals accompanied by a gift from the organizers of a special brand of Yorkshire tea and something to remember when they go home and reflect on their medals as they brew up a nice cup of tea from Yorkshire. And now for our final medal presentation of these European Championships. It's the women's doubles class 14. And our bronze medalists are from France and Great Britain. And silver to Germany and gold to Norway. And the medals are being presented by the chair, retiring chair of British para table tennis almost her final act this evening and of her eight-year tenure, in fact, nine years as chair, Karen Tong. And she hands the bronze medals to her British athletes of Felicity Picard and Grace Williams. A pleasing end, an additional medal for their medal hall this Paralympic Sorry, in this pre-Paralympic year. And to France, Lucie Hautier and Morgan Caillot once again on the, po on the uh, podium. These, the semi-finalists. And silver medals to Julianne Wolf and Stephanie Greb of Germany. Karen Tong was awarded a special gift just an hour ago in front of the big screen on behalf of the British Para Table Tennis Association. And the gold medalists Smiles and giggles, Ada Dahlen and Mereta Tweiten from Norway. That looks like their second gold medal of the championships. And so we will be rising for the national anthem of Norway. And there concludes all the medal ceremonies and all the action here from the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield. What a tournament it's been. I think it's been a great success for the organisers and above all for British para table tennis who have put on a marvellous event here in Sheffield at this wonderful facility, the English Institute of Sport. And the medal hall looks pretty and pretty good for Team GB as they head towards the Paralympics in Paris 2024. We thank you if you've been watching. 
and we hope you've enjoyed it and thank you to Channel 4 for their support of these games and to all the sponsors and partners who've made this event possible and such a success. Please keep supporting Para Sport and Para Table Tennis Sport. Have a great weekend. Good night.